It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, that's P-A-Y-N-E, along with Chief Investment Officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father as well, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's uh, shaking on this fine weekend? Well, good morning, Rye. It's a pleasure to um, be able to spend some time with you this morning since you've been so busy with all your TV appearances. I appreciate you cutting out a little time for your old man. That's the kind of benevolent son I am, Bob. I always make time for my father. So, Bob, I have a question for you uh, this morning. All right, I'm all ears. When you're evaluating a money manager, what is the most important characteristics that you look for? Well, what they would tell you is it's uh, their track record. You want to look at what type of performance and return they've had for the time that they've been managing money. You want audited numbers, obviously. You want to make okay. sure that they follow a strict discipline you know, to the whatever the prospectus tells you they're supposed to invest in. So you want to make sure there's no investment drift, if, you know, that they don't change their strategy based on their prospectus, that they follow a specific discipline and have been able you know, to outperform their underlying index, which by the way, I've never been able to find one that does that. That sounds like very rational, you know, type of analytics to look for. Well, according to one gifted astrologer, Bob, Sagittarius (laughs) are actually the (laughs) Sagittarius are actually the luckiest sign in the zodiac due to their exceptional power to attract or repeal money. So in short, they're money magnets. So if you were looking for a money manager it might be a good idea to find out what their astrological sign is first. And if they're Sagittarius, that might be the best option. So (laughs) food for thought. A lot of times, who was it? Uh, Warren Buffett said that we have astrologers that make economists look good. (laughs) That's right. They actually, uh, I think they're better than actual stock analysts. Stock analysts make fortune tellers look good. That's the line. I digress. Well, we have a terrific show this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to cover the evils of financial media. You know how Bob and I feel about the financial media. We're going to break down how the media is stopping you from making the right decisions with your money and financial planning. We're going to talk about end of year planning. There's only seven weeks left in the year. Kind of a buzzkill. Bob and I are going to discuss some end of the year financial strategies you can employ before January 1st, along with this week's financial pornography, what's out there in the news that you need to avoid, and our spotlight segment where we have our star financial advisor, Jen Angel, on the show today. And she's going to talk about a real retirement plan and some of the mistakes that this couple is making so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. So let's talk about the financial media. You know, when it comes to making decisions with your retirement, you know, it's really hard not to tune out a lot of the misinformation out there. And the one thing I think about, Bob, is all the sensationalism that we really are inundated with today in the financial world. Well, that's all you see, right? No matter what channel you tune into, the headline is always, you know, breaking news. There's breaking news every minute of the day, whether you're tuned in or not. And the problem is that people don't know how to differentiate between what's really truly breaking news and what's just ordinary information. But unfortunately for the media, unless they sensationalize everything, nobody's going to tune in. And don't forget, their job isn't to inform you. Their business is selling advertising. That's right. And I think the problem nowadays is we have so many channels to access information. You know, Whether you're pulling up your phone, you're getting on your computer, you're watching the news on TV, that the only way that these media outlets can grab your attention is is by amplifying and feeding off of your fears or your greed. And I'd say more fear than anything else. And you say this a lot, Bob, but I think you know the problem is it's like anti-investing. It takes away from being a great investor. It's everything against what investing is supposed to be about. Yeah, because they're not. Uh, what they're trying to do is evoke a, an emotional response to get you to do something. And you know, whenever you sell an investment, you know, you're going to pay capital gains tax. You're going to pay commissions. You know, the, the real key to investing is to invest for the long haul to diversify 
and to compound your dividends and interest. Uh, you can't yeah. do that if you're sitting in cash or gold. And let's talk about that for a minute, because I think that's the thing we don't realize, because we, we're invested in the market. We hope that our stocks go up in value. And we've seen a lot of that the last nine years. But what we forget is, if you go back and you look at the S&P 500 since 1926, what do you think the average return has been if you bought the S&P 500 in 19? 19- 26, Bob, which was way before you were born, for the record. <laughs> I feel like I've been around that long, though, Rye. Um, <laughs> yeah, the market's averaged 10% a year. 9.8 to be exact, time. but I'll take 10%. Well, 40% of that return had nothing to do with the market going up. It had everything to do with the fact that the S&P pays out dividends. Mm. So think about it this way. If you're watching the news, trying to figure out when to be in and out of the market, well, if you're out of the market, you're missing collecting those dividends, which is going to be almost half your return over the long term. And that's why we always say here at Pain Capital, it's time in the market, not timing the market. Very true. So, you know, let's let's talk about dividends, right? You know, it, people think they're very they're very boring, but the the point of fact is, if you look at any blue chip dividend paying stock, and you know, you can take any name, any household name, and I'm going to use Procter and Gamble just as an example. Any like idea what Procter and Gamble was yielding 20 years ago? So if I bought the stock, I'm going to say that I was getting a two three percent dividend. That's that's what it's paying, I think, around today. Yeah. So 20 years ago, it was yielding three percent, and today it's yielding three percent. Okay. So people are scratching so their head close. right now, right? You're sitting there thinking, I mean, after 20 years, I'm only getting three percent. But here's the difference: the dividend 20 years ago was 40 cents a share. Now it's two dollars and seventy-five cents a share. In other words, then like many many other dividend aristocrat stocks have increased their dividend every single year, not just for twenty years, but for sixty years. So the next year the dividend was forty-five cents, then it was fifty-one cents, then it was sixty-four cents. Now it's two dollars and seventy-five cents. So if you go back and you had an investment in a portfolio of uh, blue chip dividend stocks like Procter and Gamble. What do you think your yield would be based on the investment you made 20 years ago, Rye? It wouldn't be 3%. What would it be? Um, I'm going to say like 10% because the dividend's gone up so much you know, versus your initial investment. Now, 17% wow. every year for the rest of your life. Plus, what are the chances that blue chip stocks like Procter & Gamble, who have increased their dividend for 50, 60 years, will continue to do that for the next 20 or 30 years in your retirement? I mean, hopefully they keep increasing dividends and the odds are grossly in your favor. And you know that's a thing you have to think about right now. If you're looking at your portfolio, what kind of dividends and income are you producing? It's critical when it comes to your returns long term. It's not just about appreciation. So if you want to know what kind of income you're generating on your portfolio, how to optimize that, increase more income on your portfolio, here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do it with no obligation or cost. That's a full review that's going to cover your entire financial life. We're going to look at taxes. We'll have a CPA review last year's tax return to make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. We'll look at your estate plan. When was the last time you had your will updated? 20 years ago, 15 years ago. We'll wipe out the dust, have our estate plan and review it and make sure your estate plan is up to date what changes you need to make to your estate plan. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take all your investments, wherever they're held, 401ks, IRAs, and we're going to plot them on a simple three-page spreadsheet, our investment analysis spreadsheet, and do an x-ray of your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Can we increase or optimize the income on your portfolio? Income is critical for retirement. We're going to show you how to create the most income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at expenses. How much are you paying in fees? What are those hidden costs on your mutual funds, annuities that you're paying you don't know you're paying? We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. We're going to look at everything in our 360 portal. We're going to build you one place one place to log in so you can see everything and we can see where the pitfalls and risk are in your portfolio. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tie it all together and determine, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we have worked on for literally 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do to qualify is be one of the next 10 callers. So call us at 844 844- Plan NYC. That's 
752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you've saved over $200,000 for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Just give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. This is Rye. We are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. With a constantly changing financial landscape, having a written, customized plan is more important than ever. In New York City, turn to the team at Payne Capital Management. Call 844-PLAN-NYC to schedule a complimentary financial review. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer here at Payne Capital Management. And first, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Veterans Day, especially to all the brave men and women out there who have served and fought for our great country. Meanwhile, on the Street of Dreams, the market hit a new major milestone as the S&P 500 set a new record for the longest run without a 3% correction on a closing basis. It's now been... 371 calendar days since the last 3% dip, exceeding the previous record set during the 94-95 period. Now, this was a period in the 90s when we had the last big booming secular bull market. And if you remember during that stretch, we had the Federal Reserve Chief, Alan Greenspan, talk about irrational exuberance. Of course, after he stated that, the market more than doubled from that period. Just goes to show you that the market is smarter than the smartest man in Washington. Now, of course, the government tried to spoil the party for everyone again this week as the Senate Republicans released their own tax plan, which of course differs from the one the House Republicans released last week. Now, as we've said many, many times, never invest based on anticipation. It's never a good idea to make any portfolio changes based on a tax reform plan that's in its initial stages. Remember, every line in the tax code has a constituency attached to it. Constituents vote and they're fighting tooth and nail to protect all the deductions that they've had in the past. So it'll be a long way before we know what the finished passable tax reform looks like. So meanwhile, what I'd like everybody to do is stay invested, ignore the noise, and buy the dips. All dips in history have been temporary, and the ups inevitable. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, am I getting my piece of this big, booming, secular bull market? Why sit there and wonder when you can know? Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne, and we are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. From your first encounter with the Payne Capital Management family, you'll notice a difference. First of all, the team doesn't represent any institutions. They represent their clients. That's the power of being independent. They really separate themselves from the large brokerages and how important their personal relationship is with you, the client. You can expect frequent communication about your plan from the team. You'll have the freedom to select top investment strategies, not just one particular product. And as a fee-based financial advisory group, Payne Capital Management embraces its fiduciary responsibility to help you make decisions that serve your best interest and no one else's. See what the PCM difference is all about. Call today for a complimentary review. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know in the winter of 1780, it was so cold that the New York Harbor froze over? You could have walked from Manhattan to Staten Island on the ice. Let's hope it doesn't get that cold ever again. Although, if you had some sled dogs, it could do wonders for the commute. Anyway, keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. Mush! It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain. No Gain Financial Radio. And one of Bob and I's biggest initiatives here at Payne Capital is education, education, education. We really want to filter 
out all the noise so you make the best decisions when it comes to your investing and planning for retirement. And that's why we put together our newest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So if you want to download for free our newest guide, simply text 555 or the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. And you can get our newest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want them to. So we want to make sure you're getting the best advice when it comes to taxes and investing. So text us at 555-888, the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H. That's 555-888, the word bullish. And in this segment, we want to talk about the end of the year checklist. Yes, there are only seven weeks left in the year. And you oh, know no. how crazy this time no. of year is. Time you flies, got, uh, whether you're having fun or not, right? <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, if you're, yeah, exactly. If you're having fun or not, you know, with uh, Thanksgiving, shopping, lots of parties to attend to, travel, it's going to be nuts. So what we wanted to do is just give you a couple of things to think about as an end of year checklist for your finances. And Bob, you know, one of the first ones I think about is if you have any losses on your portfolio, we call it harvest investing losses. What does that mean and why is that a beneficial end of year strategy? Well, of course, no one has losses in our portfolios. This is for people who have losses, correct? <laughs> right, exactly. So if, yeah, unlike our portfolio right now, which is up, which is good. Well, anyway, losses, you know, they happen. They're not pleasant. And the worst thing you could do is ignore them. You want to take advantage of any paper loss you have and turn into a real loss because you can offset it against capital gains in your portfolio, and you don't have any gains, you know how long you can carry forward a loss, right? Forever. Forever. But, you you know, know, if you don't use it when you die, there's no benefit to your estate or your heirs. So even if you don't ever have any capital gains, you can actually take $3,000 of that loss against ordinary income every year for the rest of your life. So because you can do legal tax swaps, in other words, you could sell a stock and then buy a stock that's very similar, which, you know, eliminates the wash rule, you know, you really don't lose your position in the market. It's it's foolish to have this emotional response not to take losses. Don't you agree? Yeah, because I think the thing is, it's, you, you hit on a good point there. It's about flexibility and losses. I have a client that I work with and we he didn't want to take losses on his portfolio. He said, no, I don't want to do that. I only want to sell things at a gain. And what happened was I finally convinced him to do it. We're going to go into very like funds to what you own right now. So you don't you're not out of the market at all. There's no market risk. And he happened to own a bank stock. He's on the board of directors for a bank and they went public. And he sold that stock and had a huge capital gain. And we were able to use the losses on our portfolio, you know, indirectly related to the stock that he sold and use those losses against that gain elsewhere. So you know, that's kind of the point is you want to have the flexibility. You don't know what you might use those losses for. So take them as kind of the silver lining if you do have losses on your portfolio this year. You know what I think about losses? I think about, you know, you have a bank account where you put money in during interest, but you also want to have the loss bank where you bank losses that you can offset against gains because the money you get back from the IRS is just as green as the interest you would make on your other bank account. Well said. Money saved in taxes is just as green. I like that. When talking about taxes, another end of the year tax strategy you can use is have you maxed out your retirement plan at work? You can't wait until January to say, oh, I need to put more contributions into my 401k for last year. You can't do it. You have to do those before the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, that's something that most people miss. And that's what I love about our Financial 360 portal, because it forces you to update that every year and look at what you're contributing. Because a lot of times you work for a firm where you're a big executive and you may be limited into how much you contribute based on how many other people are contributing in your firm. And that number could go up with education, with training, you know, with a lot of firms. So it's something you have to review all the time. And right now is a good time to do it because if you don't put it in in the next six weeks, you lose that opportunity. Yeah, exactly right. And, you know, talking about that too, Bob, and that's why I love our 360 portal, the greatest thing since sliced bread, is you get one login, we can bring in all of your accounts, update them on a regular basis, but that also helps with rebalancing because what happens is you may have a 401k over here, you may have an IRA held over here with a bank, maybe you have a brokerage account with one of the big brokerage houses over here, 
And all these things aren't really talking to each other. And one thing we like to do at the end of the year is make sure any proactive rebalancing that we want to do. And if you don't know what all your accounts are doing and if they're not working together, it's impossible to do that correctly. And I'll give you an example. Like right now, this year, international stocks have done very, very well. And things like energy have not done well. And if you're really, really looking at your portfolio, managing risk, optimizing return, it's a great time to sell things that are up or take some profits and add to things that are down in your portfolio and maybe even take some risk off the table and add to things like bonds. You know, that's a good point, Ryan. It's not only just about putting it in, but it's also the time of year to do your RMD, your required minimum distribution. And I see a lot of problems with people who have more than one IRA or more than one 401k. You know, they have a, an advisor who takes care of them on one account and he does the proper or she does the proper RMD, but no one tells them about the other RMD. And then two, three years later, they're paying 50% tax penalties. Oh, that's such a good point, right? Because if you're over 70 and a half, you have to take money out of your retirement plans. And if you have tons, you know, lots of different IRAs out there, and you need to know the exact amount that has to come out, that's the beauty of looking at everything in one place. Because if not, you have lots of people making different calculations and you might not be doing it right. So having that holistic approach, knowing where everything is in the same place, you know, really gives you the ability with that retirement checklist to make the right decisions and to analyze these things for the end of the year. And you know, the holiday season's coming up and it's a good time to think about your charitable contributions. You know, under the new tax law proposal, Charitable contributions are, are not going to be touched. So you want to make sure that you you know make those this year. This is the time of year to start making those contributions. And a great thing to do is to gift greatly appreciated investments. So you don't have to pay the capital gains tax and you know everybody benefits, the charity benefits and your tax return benefits. Good point, Bob. So there's there's just so many things you can you should be looking at, at the end of the year here that you can take advantage of before twenty eighteen is upon us. Hey, Ryan, I got a question for you. You know, whenever you ask a new client on a scale of one to 10, how organized are they financially? What do they tell you? I'm going to say the average, you're probably a four or five. You know, you're, you're kind of organized, but you don't quite know how everything is uh, structured and where everything is. And when you ask them, where would you like to be on a scale of one to 10? What do they say? Who doesn't want to be a nine or 10, Bob? <laughs> so true, right? Now, if you want to be a nine or 10, on a scale of one to 10 of a financially organized person, all you got to do is be one of our next 10 callers. And if you've saved over 200,000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own customized 360 financial portal. This means all of your accounts, all of your passwords, all your security questions, bank accounts, brokerage accounts, insurance policy, all organized into one financial portal. Wouldn't it be amazing to be financially organized? If something happened to you, just think about how easy it will be for your children or your spouse to keep your wife working or transition your financial affairs in the event of a worst case scenario. So if you're one of the next 10 callers, here's what we're going to do for you. We're going to organize your financial life. We're going to review your taxes. We're going to review your estate plan. And we're going to take all of your investments and run for you our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. Simple three-page document that breaks down all of your portfolio into the three critical elements of a successful investment strategy, diversification, fees, and income. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one 360 financial portal that would give you a window into your financial future. Your wealth projection will update daily in real time and answer that age old question, not just today, but every day for the rest of your life. Will you outlive your money? or will your money outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my son and I have now been perfecting for over 40 years. See, we so wanna help take your family from your personal financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values, with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time, give us a call now, 844-PLAN-NYC, that's 844-752-66. 92 if you're one of the next 10 callers with over $200,000 saved for retirement a full review at 844 plan NYC that's 844 752 6692 get it done look at your financial life in one place at 844 plan NYC that's 844 752 6692 this is no pain no gain Financial Radio. Radio. 
At Payne Capital Management, we understand how crucial Social Security is to your retirement. However, Social Security is confusing, and there are many ways to claim your benefits. That's why we've developed 10 strategies for maximizing your Social Security benefits. If you text the word BULLISH to 555-888, we'll send you a link to download your free copy. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888 and you'll receive a link to register. The social security system is complex. Make sure you're making the most of your benefits. Get started today by texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. Text the word BULLISH to 555-888. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where we scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. Bob, what'd you find out there in the world of evils and financial pornography, what was top of mind this week or in the headlines? Well, Rod, the one thing I discovered this week is financial pornography is not just a domestic issue. It's happening globally. I had to go all the way over to England to find and read the Telegraph and find out that simply (laughs) because the Bank of England decided to raise their interest rates, the stock market globally is now on the verge of a crash. Just because they're going to raise their rates a little bit? That sounds crazy to me, Bob. Here's what you didn't get. High interest rates can trigger a crash while low interest rates can create a bubble. So this whole thesis by this author was since rates have been going down, that created a bubble. Now rates went up one time, that's going to create a crash. And you're seeing that a lot now. I probably have read a lot of publications just like that where, you know, oh my God, interest rates are going up. You know, the market is going to have a meltdown of some sort. And the Federal Reserve is talking about raising interest rates in December, which, you know, the odds are very high will do that. But you know what? I think What's always failed to mention, Bob, is with rates going up, that means that the economy is actually getting better, not only exactly. here, but across the pond in England. I mean, that's that's a sign of financial health or economic health, rather. Well, the other thing is, right, they always point to the Schiller Cape ratio, the CAPE ratio, because it's risen above 30. You know how long it's been above 30? That sounds like a very fancy <laughs> litmus test for how the market's doing, but I'm going to assume it's been there for a couple of years now because this Schiller, he's a guy who's out there a lot in the, the news and things like that. He's been bearish for a long time. Well, he has, but he just wrote recently that uh, he'd be the first one to tell you that the CAPE index isn't very good at market timing. <laughs> well, as we know, Bob, it's time in the market, not timing the market. And that's another reason why you know you need to stay away from financial pornography. And you just you know to hit the point home, interest rates going up is not necessarily a bad thing. And right now, we actually view that as a very positive because that means that economic growth is picking up. It also means when you're buying bonds and things in your portfolio, you're going to start to lock in at some better interest rates, which we've been waiting for for a long time. The stock market's going up because it's doing better, better earnings, you know, better economic cycle. And you make more money when your bonds come due if you invest at a higher interest rate. So that's why we decry financial pornography so much because it is anti-investment. It's anti-goal achieving. It's the worst thing you could possibly tune into. Ignore the noise. Get invested on your goals. And that's the most successful thing you can do as an investor. Well, on that same note, Bob, I found some more financial pornography out there this week. I know it's shocking to think that I found even more. But another one that I see out there is, you know, we've, we've heard a lot about some sort of tax proposal, which, you know, who knows what's going to get passed, what's not going to get passed. But one article I've been seeing very often right now is U.S. tax reform, optimism fuels markets. There's this mm-hmm. belief out there right now that whatever's going on in Washington is having a dramatic effect or will have a dramatic effect on the stock market. And you know, we always say this long term, but the market is a slave to earnings. You know, what does that mean, Bob, in layman's terms? Well, what it simply means, Rob, when you measure the market, it's, it's usually measured by different ratios. So one ratio is called the P-E ratio. Now, P stands for price, you know, that's what the stock market's trading at or what the price of your stock is. And the E is for earnings, which is the profit of a company. So just think if you owned a company that sells widgets, all right? The more widgets you sell, the more profit you make, the more valuable your company is. So there's a direct one-to-one relationship 
between the price of the stock market and the profits or the gains that the underlying companies are making. And profits, guess what? They're an all-time record high. This country is the wealthiest it's ever been. Right now, today, this weekend, it's the wealthiest it's ever been since no matter who you are, you are sitting at a time where more profits have been made this year than ever in the history of the world. Right. So the, the market's focused on, are companies going to make more money? Well, they have been making more money and they're projecting to the future. They're projecting they're going to make even more money. So I, I would argue that regardless of what happens in Washington, you know, whether some tax reform does get passed or doesn't get passed, there's a very good or highly likely odds that it's going to have no effect on the market whatsoever. So again, kind of avoiding the noise and looking at where we are right now. And just a reminder that right now we have synchronized global growth around the world. That means economies around the world are growing, maybe at a slower pace than they have historically, but all the market cares about is growth. You have companies making more money than they ever had before, and they're projecting into next year they're going to make even more money. This is well, what we thing, call- right? Everything is priced into the market. So everything that's known, everything that you read, everything that you listen to, everybody else reads and everybody else listens to, and it's already in the market. You know what causes drops in the market? Financial pornography. Financial pornography, but more importantly, unexpected events. They're called black swans. That's right. That's right. So you got to stop trying to invest based on what you think or, or maybe not think is going to happen ahead and start- as we always say, and start goal-based investing, investing on what your goals are. You got to follow process, right? You follow events. You know, you're going to make your stockbroker rich. You're going to make your brokerage firm rich. You're going to be in the poorhouse. Yeah, and if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, "I'm tired of sitting on the sidelines, sitting with cash, trying to figure out the best time to get invested," you need to start thinking about your goals now. And here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next ten callers and you have over two hundred thousand dollars saved for retirement. Bob and I will put together a customized goal-based financial plan just for you where we'll look at everything. We're going to look at taxes. Are you paying unnecessary taxes? Well, we'll have our CPA partner review last year's tax return to make sure you're not paying more than your share. We're going to look at your legal docs. When was the last time you had that will updated? 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Well, we're going to have our estate planner review your legal docs and make sure that your will, your trust are up to date. And we're going to look at all your investments. We're going to put everything into one 360 portal. And we're going to take a look at everything up to date, those brokerage accounts, annuities, 401ks, IRAs. And we're going to look at everything. And we're going to break it down into a three-page spreadsheet, our investment analysis spreadsheet. And we're going to look at income. How much income is your portfolio producing? Can you increase or optimize the income on your portfolio. Income is critical for retirement. We're going to look at fees. What cost are you really paying in your portfolio? What are the hidden fees in those mutual funds? Annuities. We're going to break down all the fees in your portfolio and show you how to reduce the cost. And we're going to look at diversification. We're going to analyze everything in your own personalized portal. We're going to look at your diversity. What unnecessary risk do you have in your portfolio? Bob and I are going to show you what those pitfalls are. And then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now we've worked on for 40 years to determine, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? So don't miss out. Give us a call at 844 844- Plan NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for retirement, our team will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Just give us a call. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. We told you earlier that Bob Payne is Managing Director of Payne Capital Management. This means he oversees all the portfolio designs and financial planning strategies for the firm. For 40 years, he's worked to change the way the financial industry approaches financial planning. He turned away from the traditional Wall Street sales pitch and pioneered a new approach to retirement planning using goal-oriented, customizable plans that better fit your individual needs. Reach out to Bob and the team for a complimentary review by calling 844-PLAN-NYC. 
That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know pinball was once banned in the city? It was in place until 1978. Speaking of pinballs, if you're tired of watching your accounts bounce all over the place, you should keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I here at Pain Capital Management want to educate you. In our newest guide, The Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA? You can access it for free if you text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. Again, that's the word bullish to 555-888. We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So you can download our newest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want them to. Text us at 555-888, the word bullish, and you get our latest guide for free. And if you want to know more about Bob and I, if you really want to know if Bob's hair is real, and it is, you can check us out on the World Wide Web at bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com and learn a little more about Bob and I. And if you have a question, a burning question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I will personally answer your questions. And if it's a really good question, we'll answer it right here on the show. And as every week, Bob, we got some pretty good questions. The first one comes in from Andy. He's in Queens. He writes in, Bob, I'm selling one of my rental properties in the next month or two. I don't have plans to buy another one. What's the best thing to do with the money from that sale? Okay, Andy, I'll tell you, that's uh, terrific that you're able to sell one of your rental properties because, you know, I find with real estate, it's so easy to buy, but boy, it's so hard to sell. And and that's been my experience. But, uh, you know, you could do a 1031 exchange if you did it over 180 days and buy another rental property. But as you say, you don't want to. So what I would do is, is follow the discipline strategy that Ryan and I have been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's called the A to B strategy. You want to have a portfolio of liquid investments to complement, you know, maybe the illiquid rental properties that you still own. You know, goal-based investing is really the most successful way to achieve goals and to stay invested and to have more liquid, a more liquid portfolio than a real estate portfolio. Hey, Ryan, in the past, we've talked to a lot of people about rental properties. And as they get into retirement, what are some of the problems they run into? I think it just comes down to lifestyle. You may have accumulated a lot of properties that you maintain, and even the rental income might be pretty good from some of the the properties that you have. But the joke I always like to make is, well, if you had a big bond portfolio producing income, it's not going to call you at three in the morning because, you know, the, the water main uh, broke or, you know, all the other things, you know what happens when you own real estate. So I think it just comes down to simplicity, less what I call sweat equity, especially mm-hmm. as you start thinking about retirement and the hassles that you may or may not want to have. The nice thing about a diversified portfolio, Bob, is just the fact that it's low maintenance. And I think that's a lot of times what financial security and independence is all about. Yeah, I think a portfolio of financial assets is truly a passive investment strategy where if you own rental properties, you're still working, whether you're the owner of the of the business or you're actually doing the work. So either you're hiring somebody to fix those leaks, especially in this day and age of these dramatic uh, storms that we have with you know fires on the West Coast, hurricanes in Florida, hurricanes and tropical storms hitting New York. There's a lot of damage being done to buildings and it takes a lot of time. Your time's worth money. Yeah, exactly right. And that's the thing is, can you put a price on time? And I think one of the things as you start thinking about retirement is having more time, not less time. And I think that's where it's really beneficial Again, where we build that 360 portal and you're able to analyze everything, we can run some projections and you can start to look at maybe I have a lot of different rental properties and decide, well, some of these properties, I want them to go in retirement. You don't have to give them all up, but I think finding that balance so you can build a customized plan for yourself is critical, especially when it comes down to figuring out how many hassles you want to have in retirement. The next question that comes in is from Helen. She's in Fort Lee. She writes in, Ryan, are there really no tax implications to rolling over my 401k? 
I don't really like the investment options in my 401k, but I don't want to roll it over and then get hit with a tax bill I wasn't expecting. Well, I don't like unexpected tax bills either, Helen. It really depends. If you have a 401k at work, some of the drawbacks are you have limited investment options. There can be a lot of hidden costs in the funds that you own. And a lot of the admin costs, you end up paying out of your pocket, not your employer's pocket. So it is important. And a lot of times that can be one of your biggest nest eggs, Bob. So you know, what kind of options do you, do you have when it comes to a 401k, especially if you have a lot of money in there? Well, first of all, you can do legally an IRA rollover. We can roll it to, over to another institution as long as you're 59 and a half or older. You can roll it over into an IRA, and then you have complete control over your 401k. You can control your cost, you can control your strategy, and you have the entire investment universe available to you. Now, Brian, right, Helen was worried about the tax implications of doing a rollover. You know, why does she think there's tax implications? Well, because let's face it, when money comes out of a 401k, you're going to pay taxes on it. That's why the difference is you don't want to take the money out of your 401k, you want to roll it over to, in this case, an individual retirement account. And that's another point. If you're still working for a company, you might think, well, I'm stuck with this plan. But depending on your age, and 59 and a half is typically the age, you may be allowed to do what we call an in-service distribution. And what that means is you can still add to your plan, get the tax benefit, but you can roll a portion of the money out and control it and an individual or an IRA, individual retirement account or an IRA just for you. So there is a lot of flexibility there, even if you're still working for the company, Bob. You know what the most evil investment in the world is in a 401k, right? The most evil. Wow. <laughs> I've never heard investments called evil before. I think I know where you're going with this. I'm going to take a wild guess. Is it bond funds, Bob? Open-end bond funds. Heads you lose, tails you lose. If interest <laughs> rates go down, people pour money into those things and your yield goes down. If interest rates go up, People sell like crazy and knock your NAV down. You know, you can control the risk in a bond portfolio by owning individual bonds. And you can't do that in a 401k, but you can do it in an IRA rollover. Yeah. And that's something to think about because as your nest egg builds in your 401k, you want to start to build some safety in. And other than sitting in cash, you know, bond funds do not create the level of safety you need, especially as you're getting closer to retirement. Hey, Ry, so well said. They are excellent points on why to do an IRA rollover. And if you're sitting there wondering, you know, do I have other questions about my 401k, my personal situation? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved at least $200,000 for your retirement, my son and I will run for you our renowned total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. And if you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what we're going to do for you. We're going to have our CPA partner, review your current tax return to make sure you're not paying any of those unnecessary taxes. Secondly, we're going to have your estate plan reviewed by our estate planning attorney to be certain that your estate plan is not an IOU to the Internal Revenue Service. And lastly, we want to review all of your investment statements. Now, I know it takes a lot of time and effort to go through those statements. Don't bother. Just throw them in a shopping bag, pick up the phone, make an appointment. We'll take all of that data all that complex information and reduce it down to our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. This is a simple three-page document that reveals all. It shows if you're diversified. It tells you what fees you're paying. It helps to optimize your income. See, the three key elements of a successful investment strategy are true diversification, low cost, and high income. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one wealth projection that will answer that age-old question, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? And we'll help you do that utilizing strategies that my son and I have been perfecting now for over 40 years. We want to help take your family from your financial point A to point B, your goals, your dreams with your values, do it with the least amount of risk and with as much certainty as a fiduciary like us can provide. So don't waste time. Give us a call at 844 844- Plan NYC. That's 844 752 6692. If you're one of the next few callers, we have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved at 844 Plan NYC, that's 844 752 6692. Let us build a portal for you. Organize everything in your financial life at 844 Plan NYC, that's 844 752 6692. This is no 
Kane, No Gain Financial Radio. Here's this week's spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And one of Bob and I's biggest missions here at Pain Capital is education and our newest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA, is available for you for a free download if you text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So go ahead and text 555-888, the word bullish, and you can get our truth about taxes and retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want them to. So text us the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. And it's time for my favorite part of the show, our spotlight segment, where we dissect a real financial plan every week, and we uncover what we call the flaws or pain points, that's P-A-Y-N-E for the record, so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. And we have a very, very special guest today, Jen Financial Angel, one of our star financial advisors at Payne Capital. Good morning, Jen. Good What's morning. What's cooking? What's up, guys? How are we? If I was doing any better, it'd be illegal. <laughs> if I was doing any better, Jen, I'd be Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's good to be Ryan. So, Jen, you worked on a case this past week. Why don't you give us the rundown and talk about some of the mistakes that were going on with this retirement plan, basically? Sure. So, you and I met with um, this, this couple. They're both retired. They have a lot, at this point, saved for retirement. They're not necessarily concerned with you know leaving a legacy for their kids. They're planning on you know ideally spending it all, but you know timing it perfectly as you know I think we all would. <laughs> <laughs> and you know looking at you know obviously their allocation, their diversification. You know we saw that couples in their seventies and more than almost more than half of the portfolio is in basically the S and P, which we see. All the time. (laughs) Yes. There's no diversification. And this is the the great irony that we see is you probably have a lot of different accounts in a lot of different places with lots of different investment names. But when you break down all the funds you have, and this is what we do in our 360 portal, you have all the same stocks. They all own the same investments. So there's no diversification where you think you have a lot of diversification. Exactly. So, you know, for example, his client holds Microsoft, right? We run this report, and it's Microsoft's also in these 11 different funds that he's in. So the reality is you might just see that one stock holding, but you have that same stock holding is in 10 different funds that you also hold. Which is just crazy. And, you know, dissecting what's actually in those funds, I think was a real eye opener. Yeah, it's you have the Fidelity Balance Fund, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Fund, the Fidelity US Large Cap Index, Fidelity Contra Fund. You would think these are all different funds, but they own all the same stuff. Yeah. You know, we looked at another one that was uh, is Apple stock and you know, you have, you know, X amount in Apple, but it's also in all these other funds. So the reality is you might only have you know, 40,000 in Apple, but it really actually has like 90,000 in Apple because all these other funds. So that was, I think was a, a big eye opener for him as well. And just dissecting each one of those individual funds that are all in the same things. Yeah, it's so true. When you have a situation where a client has individual stocks like this particular person, and then they have mutual funds, it's almost as if you want to make a list of the 10,000 publicly traded companies out there and say, okay, pick the 10 best. They, they have a hard time doing that because it's like, well, I don't know what the 10 best are. Then why do you own these 10 individual stocks? So it's, it's sometimes you just end up owning stocks. You become attached to them, not realizing that the key is is the real true diversification. And, and I think when you, you have a lack of that without any small cap or mid cap or any small companies or mid companies, you're, you're not going to see that, Jen. And uh, that was a great point that you made. Yeah, I think that was definitely a big point. You know, the other kind of major point that we we did was look at any you know annuities that he had or any you know outside managed accounts and you know he didn't really realize that he's paying you know more than 1% on just you know this quote guaranteed income stream but the reality is we can do the same thing in you know a more structured portfolio yeah. without depleting his principal so you know that was kind of a big one for him as well because you know they're living off this income they're living off the land they want to make sure that they can do that without necessarily depleting their principal along the way and that's one of my biggest pet peeves is annuity companies love to use that word guarantee 
And you, if you're planning for retirement, it sounds great to hear the word guarantee. But when you start to break down how some of these annuities work, all they're really doing is paying your principal back to you over time mm -hmm. with a little bit of a return. And when you figure out what those real returns are, not the quote unquote guaranteed 6% return they give you, which is usually not a real return, it works out to be like 2 3%, which actually you're losing money against inflation. So it's, it's actually not a great guarantee to have. Yeah, I mean, the actual product is called growth and guaranteed income. <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's the whole point. You get only a portfolio of municipal bonds where the income is tax-free as opposed to from an annuity where the income is taxable. You have a portfolio of high-quality bonds that come due someday or that are liquid. You can get your money if you need to. So you're getting a higher rate of return, more liquidity. I don't understand why anybody would put their money into an annuity. Me neither, Bob. Me neither. I mean, you know, we running through the full analysis, looking at the lower expenses, the lower cost fees, you know, a more diversified portfolio. The irony is you're taking less risk, you're getting more income. You know, we were able to increase this income by over almost fifty fifty nine thousand a year, which is huge, which is wow. basically what they need to live on. That is insane. Let's just say that one more time, just by reducing the cost increasing the income, which basically you're creating, I'd argue, a way more conservative portfolio, that's another $58,000 a year. <laughs> that's a really nice car every year. Yeah. <laughs> depending on what your tastes are. A couple nice trips there, here and there, you know, going to Disney, going to Hawaii, whatever it is. You know, not only is it, the, uh, is it more income, but what if they're reinvesting and compounding that income? That's another million three over 20 years. Who couldn't use an extra million 300,000? I could use that. <laughs> <laughs> I could, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you're thinking to yourself, I could use uh, some extra income every year. I want to know the real fees I'm paying on my portfolio. I have high cost annuities or I'm looking at things like this. Here's your shot to get a full review. We have a few slots left. If you're one of the next few callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Myself, Bob, and Jen Financial Angel will run a full total financial plan review just like this. And that just entails, we'll take all of your investments, all your statements, your annuities, insurance products, 401ks. We're going to put it into one portal that you can access, updating everything so we can see what diversification do you have in your portfolio. Do you have a lot of overlap? Do you have a lot of different funds that own all the same things? What about income? Would you like to increase the income on your portfolio by fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year? Income's critical in retirement. We're going to show you how to optimize that, and we're going to look at fees. What hidden costs do you have in your portfolio that you don't know you're paying? There's probably a lot. Mutual funds, a lot of these annuities, a lot of these structured products. Do you really know the cost on your portfolio? We're going to break it out for you in hard dollars, and then what we're going to do is we're going to tie it all together, and we're going to determine. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now we've literally worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? We have a few slots left, so give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers with over 200000 saved for retirement, our team will create for you your own personal 360 financial portal. Just give us a call, 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another amazing show and always an amazing show when you have Jen Financial Angel. I know. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> and always Great so humble. Great to have you on. <laughs> big Bob, <laughs> what's on tap? Uh, well, get ready to pack up and head weekend. to the Big Apple, Rye. Be coming to see you soon. We're waiting for you. Another great show, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.